I'm gonna fight her. I'm gonna fight her. I better never see Libba Bray in the streets because I'ma throw hands. Hey guys, Katie here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're watching this one, then you probably already have watched the other three videos that are in the Diviner series. I did a vlog for each one of them. In this one, I am reading The King of Crows by Libba Bray. This is the fourth in a quartet of books, and I do have a vlog for each of the other ones. I will have them linked down below so you can go and view those. Um, you know, in all the other videos, I was like, I'm not going to spoil anything. There's like no spoilers. That's not true here. That's not true, sis. Okay, so for the almost entirety of the video, there's going to be no spoilers. But at the very end, I'm going to have a spoiler section. And it's going to be the entire review. Like, I have a mild part of just saying, like, what I thought about the book. And then it's going to be, like, a big old chunk of spoilers. Because I feel some sort of way. Okay? Let's just go into the vlog. I have started this book so many times in the past week and just put it down. And I, you know what? Starting it is giving this too much credit. This is what I do. Nope. I can't. I can't. I can't. And then I just put it down and I read something else because I'm scared. Okay? Do you understand? I'm scared. I can't. Like, What's going to happen? Am I going to like it? Can I handle it? Apparently not. I don't know if today's the day. I don't know if I can do it. This is my day off and it's what, 7.30 p.m. And I've been trying since like 10 a.m. to read this book. <sighs> is Libba Bray going to get me committed? Okay, the dust jacket is off. I'm going to read this book. Here's a problem. I'm in a really big physical reading slump. So I think I'm going to listen to the audio because it did come in on Libby. And I really, really wanted to read this physically, but I just don't think, like, I'm in, like, the right space right now to do that. And I'm not gonna, like, wait till next October. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, this is spooky season. I need to read it this October. So I think I'm just gonna listen to the audio and follow along in the book. And then, like, maybe I'll just, like, pick up physically reading at some point. I don't know, but I'm gonna do it. I made coffee at 8 p.m. because I need vitality. I am only on chapter two. And I teared up just hearing Isaiah's name. There's something wrong with me. I was like, this is the last book. <laughs> so I have a lot of emotions, okay? Nothing has happened yet. We're on like page six. But I'm just so happy to be here. Let's get back in. Oh my god, I completely forgot to update you. I got totally sidetracked. And it's like 1 a.m. now, so oops. But um the book is good. The book is good so far. Um there's not really anything happening that I'm like freaking out about. But um, I think that's just due to expectations being so high of like things being emotional and dramatic. We'll see though. We're only in like the first 20%. Okay, so I'm on page 150. Nothing exciting is happening. I mean, like, technically exciting things are happening. I'm just not super excited about them. But one thing. Um, the fact that Sam's backstory is an acrobat in the circus. Like, Sam Lloyd. Sergey Lobovich. Is he perfect? Yeah. <laughs> He's perfect. He... Oh, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Like, I just, mm, the thought of this guy doing, like, freaking backflips and perfect steady handstands is, like, why is that so sexy? Like, we just, I love him. I'm 191 pages in, so we're going to say 200. And uh, this is that small part or whatever. That's as much as I've gotten done. And nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. I'm bored. I'm so disappointed to say that, but I'm bored. Like, nothing, nothing's happening. This is like, you know that part in Harry Potter where they're looking for the Horcruxes and they spend half the book just wandering around the woods? That's what I feel like. Like, these characters are just 
like running around with chickens with their head cuts off chickens with their heads cut off but like the plot is not progressing the nothing's happening with the plot nothing's happening with the characters it's just i'm sure shit's gonna change but like 200 pages that's a lot and i'm kind of upset do you guys think jericho and bill compton are related because i think it might be his son that's how much they act alike well, I'm not gonna be able to read any more today because we only have two servers on and it's supposed to be busy. So all I'm gonna be able to do is run around like a chicken with my head cut off. You see that, how we turn the phrase? Um, yeah, so I guess I'll be able to hit you up tomorrow with another update. Okay, Grace and I are going to go to the dollar store. She has to get something from there. I have no idea, like a gift basket. Don't know, but uh, she wants to go to the dollar store and you know, we love frivolous purchases. So what better place to do it? And then hopefully if we have enough time before she has to pick up her daughter, we are going to go to the half price books that I have not been to before that all of my coworkers are saying is like the best one. Do I need to get books? Absolutely not. Did I go to Barnes and Noble literally yesterday? I did. Um, my TBR is freaking huge, but you know, Grace said, let's go to the bookstore. And I was like, <laughs> Who am I to say though? No? So we're going. So I'm sitting in a Dollar Tree slash Dollar General. I don't think I've ever seen those stores next to each other. Anyway, sitting in the parking lot there because I'm waiting for my friend Grace. We're gonna go there and then we're gonna go to Half Price Books if we have time. But I am gonna read King of Crows. I'm on 284 and finally we have some tabs. I mean, of course they're all Ling Chan because she's a queen. And then we did also have one yellow tab, which I'm thinking I'm gonna use yellow for like friendship or like something that made me really happy. But God bless, like, I can't say things are really moving, like that things are happening, but I've at least felt something. So we're getting there. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> this is not a spoiler because nobody cares, has nothing to do with the plot. Jake Marlowe's parents died on the Titanic? Wow. Libba Bray was like, what year is this? Mm. Let's use it for what it's worth. Like, she was really like, could I work the Titanic into this somehow? Yeah, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> oh my God, it's Grace. Look at this absolute legend. Freaking Grease is shaking. Let's go a little OOTD. Who is she? Oh my God, look at this. Yeah! This mask deserves a specific highlight. Oh my god. Mm, you look cute. Look. I, need Ooh, to I love that. Oh my god, yes, these are so soft. Okay, going in the basket. My absolute favorite section. That's it's huge. This big one. They're different sizes. Oh my gosh. That would be perfect. Hold it up. Let's see. Cute. Grace is doing a clue costume, and this would be, I mean, <laughs> it's perfect. I really didn't think I was going to find this much stuff, but Sabrina's been asking me for these. Like, this is a microphone and bulldozer. Yeah, found a lot. Okay, I like the tabs where you can like see the words under it because I don't want to cut off any part of my book. And Grace said that she buys these and that they'd probably work. So I'm going to get these. I'm like super excited. There's like a bajillion colors. So, you know, I'm about to have an indecisive stroke, but we'll see. Mm, we got the loot. Was it a success? Yeah. Yay. But I am at Grace's house right now. Uh, I drove here because we couldn't figure out what we wanted to do. So I drove over to her house and we're planning on filming a video of basically like all the books her and I buddy read this year. There is so many options, so many. Don't know how that video is gonna go. Don't know if we can even do it today, but that is the plan and we'll see how it goes. What is this? Little House on the Prairie vibes AF. This is amazing. Because that's what I saw on Instagram that you're supposed <gasps> to do. Wait, you are supposed to do that? Yeah. I thought that was like a joke. Oh, fuck. I don't... 
Oh my God, I thought there was something inside of that. The smoke. Oh my God, it is lush. This is amazing. This is some wild shit. Look, this, I just threw this piece of a, um, of like a succulent in here and it started growing little baby, like, look at this it one. It doesn't even have roots? That's crazy. Oh yeah, I think it's gonna get roots eventually. That one's growing, that one's growing. That's amazing. Okay, she's got a freaking green thumb. But of course, if you're gonna wear this dress with Doc Martens, you have to have a green thumb. I feel like a classy bitch right now. <laughs> this is what this is what we call spicy elegance. Yeah, that voice was the spice factor. <laughs> spicy elegance is absolutely gonna be the name of my strip club. <laughs> she does it again. All right, I have about a hundred pages left, so I will be finishing this today. I think I'm gonna continue listening to the audio, and I might like live read the last. 50 or 30 pages. I don't know. It really depends on how I'm feeling about the book. One update is that there is something that I feel like everybody has been waiting for me to talk about because I should be so happy about it. Like it, I'm happy that it happened. It's a big spoiler. Not going to say it, but I'm happy that it happened, you know? Um, but the way that it happened, it was just way too fast. Like I didn't see it coming. I didn't think it like super made sense for it to happen the way that it did. And it just wasn't sweet enough for, it just, it was supposed to make me like feel all the feelings. And I really, what I felt was, did that just happen? Okay. <laughs> it, I was a little disappointed, not gonna lie to you. I'll tell you what it is in the spoiler section. Guys, I did not realize how close to the end of the book I am. I have like 50 pages <laughs> and I'm getting those like end of series emotions. So I was like, I'm gonna have to say goodbye to these characters and I don't want to. And I'm like, even though this book has been like not, it just hasn't been what I wanted it to be. It was very disappointing. I am just like still like just very overwhelmed. So I'm like, I'm gonna sit down and finish reading it physically. I have my annotation station. I um, have to have both because I ran out of the Sam and Evie tabs and I'm sure I'm gonna need those. And then, you know, we have our highlighter and pen, water, book, myriad of pillows, and some caffeine because it's not like I'm going to sleep anytime soon, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's just get to whatever is gonna happen next. What? Oh my god. You're really- that's gonna be your last note. Your last note is re I can't believe she ended it that way. I can't. I can't. I didn't like it. 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 I... It's trash. <laughs> bye bye. All I'm gonna say in this non-spoilery part of the video is that it was a giant disappointment. I freaking hated it. I hated every second of it. It was so boring. It was unnecessary. It was not even close to as good as the other books. It literally felt like the same author didn't write this book. Like who is this Libra Bray? Somebody like took over her body because this is not the same author. Like she didn't sound, the characters didn't sound like themselves. Uh, her pacing was horrible. Like the plot was boring. The whole book was boring. It was way too long. It didn't make sense. It was so convenient. I freaking hated it. 
Uh, I need a cocktail. Okay, I'm gonna make a cocktail and then I'll be back. I already finished like three fourths of the cocktail because I needed it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go into the spoilers because the spoiler free part, I don't give a single shit. I just want to rant. So we're going to go into heavy spoilers. Um, I'll have like spoilers written somewhere on here or whatever. But everything from this point on is going to be a rant review and it is going to spoil it. So if you're choosing to watch past this point, that's your bad. Okay, you're bad. Stop watching if you don't want to know. Okay, but honestly, I would say just stop, stop reading after the third book because <laughs> anyway, let's get to spoilers. Oh girl, I have notes. So many scathing notes. First spoiler, Jericho dies. Big whoop, don't care. Um, he sacrifices himself and I was like, did you think that was gonna redeem him? Because like, don't give a single shit. His insta-love with Lupe, like a character that just comes out of nowhere and then it's like an insta-love just to get him out of Evie's storyline was so convenient, it was so lazy and it was so unnecessary. Why can't a character just realize they're not going to be with another character and not because they fell in love with somebody else. It's like, why was that even freaking necessary? Like, Jericho should have just, like, died. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Fuck Jericho. He should have just died. Like, his character just should have freaking, he should have just been like, you know what? Bye. And deuced out of the story. Like, why was that freaking necessary? Speaking of that, why did every single character have a love interest? Like, why is that something that's necessary? Like, the only character, I think, in the book that didn't have a love interest was T.S. Woodhouse. Yeah, he's the only one. Like, okay, speaking of that, where's David? Oh, I'm sorry, do you not remember who that is? Because it didn't matter. Henry's boyfriend that you see for like 0.5 seconds of like the end of the second book and then like a little bit of the third book and he's never, I don't even think he's like even, he's like briefly mentioned, briefly. And it's not He's not on the page. He's being talked about in third person. Why did that matter? And at the end of the book, when like the epilogue happens, where the fuck is he? Who cares? Nobody. Because that love story didn't have anything to do with the plot. It did not further the plot. It did not further um, Henry's storyline. It did not further his character growth. It literally meant nothing. It was just there to prove that he was gay. And I was like, I don't care. Why were Henry and Theta's like, why would they, their friendship not highlighted more? Because their friendship was one of the biggest things to me. And I swear to God, after the first book, it was like, anyway. And it was just like, not even talked about again. Like, the second book, it's kind of talked about. But like, where did their friendship go? <laughs> what? Like, I was so mad. And then I also felt like Theta and Memphis weren't really talked about. And like, in the fourth book, or like, they were talked about. But it was so freaking boring. Like, it was so boring. And I, I thought that like, the KKK getting brought into this book was going to be such an amazing plot device. Like, I was so excited. And then she just made it nothing. Like, it was just nothing. There was too many things to focus on. And it was so watered down. All the characters were so incredibly watered down and so boring. Like, there was no humor. None. There was no banter. And in the first book, the banter is, like, freaking peak. And I'm like, I get that it was written in, like, 2012 and that now it's 2020, so that was eight years ago. But, like, what? Is Little Bray just, like, not funny all of a sudden? Also, the book was way too freaking long. It was way too long. It was so slow. I don't know what Little Bray was doing, but the pacing was just so insanely off. Like, the book took for freaking ever. I could not read it physically. I had to listen to the audio. Uh, I mean, I, like, read the last, like, 50 pages. But, like, it was so boring that every time I picked it up physically, I was like, and? And then just went about my day. Like, <laughs> there was no emotion in this book at all. Like, I didn't care about anything that was happening. I didn't think anything was beautiful. I didn't think anything was sad. Um, like, I never, like, cried reading this, which I should have. I, like, almost did, I think, at, like, one point with, like, Mabel being put to rest. And that was it. Like, okay, why were things not focused on? Like, there would be some emotional things that would happen and they were just blown by and they were so convenient and they happened so freaking fast. It was ridiculous. Like, um, Will, like, where was this ghost? He never got put to rest. That should have been a bigger deal. Like, why did Jericho not react to Will's death? That was like a father to him. That should have been a big freaking deal. Why did we not get to see Jericho's reaction to Mabel's death? Like, what? And I do feel like Will's death was like not that big a deal. Like, and that was really sad to me. And like, um, like uh, Octavia, I think, and like Adelaide, like them dying was just like, 
okay, bye. And then, oh, don't even get me freaking started on the fact that like Isaiah dies and then like 30 pages later is resurrected. Even though in the first three books, it's like, don't do it. You can't bring things back from the dead. It's like a cardinal sin. Like it's horrible. It's horrible. And then now it's like, okay, so why don't we bring everybody back? Like, why don't you bring Mabel back? Like, I don't understand why Isaiah can do it and nobody else can do it. Like, why? Speaking of emotion, the fact that Isaiah died, I was like, one, I saw it coming a bajillion miles away and it wasn't even sad. Like, okay, hold on. Sarah Beth. What? Like, let's talk about how from the jump, from the first page, I was like, this bitch is a villain. There is something not right about her sis. Like, she is messed up. She is creepy AF. Like, why are all the characters just like, sure, let's go on a cross freaking country road trip to find this creepy ass little diviner girl that says that she has to come here. It's like, why? Like, that was so freaking dumb. And the fact that Evie never read any of her belongings to find out, like, what her deal was, like, oh, no. Oh my god, and the fact that she was 15, I was shook. I was like, excuse me? I thought she was 10. She talked like she was 10, she acted like she was 10, she was like a creepy little doll like she was 10, and then she was 15? How old's Isaiah? Like 12? Like why were they buddying up? Why didn't anybody see how creepy this was? So when she killed him, I was like, yeah, duh, um, duh. I just, um, I just thought that was horrible and I was very, very mad that all the characters were so stupid in not realizing that she was a villain. Speaking of villains, the King of Crows never should have even been one. The real villain of the story was Jake Marlowe. Now that was interesting. Jake Marlowe was so interesting. He was so evil. He was just disgusting. But you like got to see why he thought what he was doing was right. And it was so intriguing. And then, oh, there's this King of Crows who's just omnipresent. Like he never even does anything. He doesn't interact with the characters. He doesn't do shit. He just shows up and is like, I'm big bad. And it's like, okay, prove it. I want to see it. I don't want to hear you say it. I want to see you doing some shit. And no, all the other like monster of the weeks, like in the other books were so freaking terrifying. Like Naughty John is number one. He was so good. And then this guy just comes out with like a coat of crows and is like, I'm the biggest evil. And then you know who kills him? Like a 12 year old. Literally, how did it go from Isaiah being like, oh, I'm going to write my life story and that's going to save me from you. And then he just looks at him and is like, look and king of crows is like look inside my coat and if you can tell me what's inside my coat then i'll leave you alone or i'll disappear and then isaiah just looks in his coat and is like you ain't shit and he just dies also tell me why the eye it took all of the diviners combined energy and one of them sacrificing themselves to take the eye out but then the king of crows gets killed by a turn of phrase from a 12 year old. <laughs> Excuse me? That was so stupid. Oh yeah, and back to somebody who was interesting, Jake Marlowe, dies off screen. When they all like the dust settles and everybody else is alive except Jake Marlowe, I was like, it didn't even say what happened to him. I don't even know how he died. Like, I, I, I just read the book and I, I can't tell you how he died because it was literally, you didn't see it. They just looked down at his body and it was like his lifeless eyes. I was like, that is the satisfaction I wanted. I wanted to see Jake Marlowe begging for his fucking life. Like he was the real villain of this whole story. And that would have been so much better is if the King of Crows was like not even a big deal. And it was like, oh yeah, by the way, the real bad guy is like this like fucked up America. Like that's what I wanted. And I did not get it. I should have loved the scene where Sam proposes to Evie. I love that it happened. I do. But it was so lackluster. It came out of fucking nowhere. And the chapter's literally titled Proposal. So <laughs> you literally gave it away, sis. You literally gave it away at the jump. And I was so mad. Like, that should have been beautiful. And I was just like, oh, we're really doing this? Okay. Like, if that had happened in the third book, I would have been freaking dying because the third book was really good. Um, <laughs> I didn't feel anything. I felt like their banter was terrible. I felt like it was so freaking boring. I just really didn't care at all. Like, the only thing in this book that made me, like, feel any kind of, like, emotion was happiness that Ling Chan was, like, the savior of this story when it came to Jericho because Ling Chan and Jericho are, like, together in this, well, not together, but they're, like, 
together scene wise in this book and Ling Chan literally tells Jericho that he's like Heathcliff and he needs to stop pining over Evie because Evie doesn't want him and he needs to just freaking get over it and I was like oh my god we stand a legend like she is a queen and she does it so many times and she's just like hey uh Lupe um Jericho doesn't have any girl maybe you want to just like ask him out or something and then when they see Evie again Ling is like nope Evie, Jericho's taken. Stop looking at him. Stop doing it. And I was like, yes, Ling. Thank God. <laughs> like, I freaking love her. But that's it. That was, like, the only thing I cared about. The ending. The fact that the very end, when they're all in that pastrami shop and then the radio, they're like, there's, like, a German guy screaming and in the background there's just a bunch of German people shouting Heil Hitler. I was like, and that's, like, the last sentence. I was like, so is there another book? Is there another book? Is there another series that's gonna come out? Like, is there like a, gonna be a follow-up series? Because if not, why the fuck would you end like that? Like, why would you do that? I just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? I will say that if there is another series that's gonna come out and it's gonna be about the Diviners fighting Hitler, sign me up. I don't care that I hated this book. I'll read the entirety of the other books if they come out with some because that would be freaking sickening. But if not, why do that? Guys, I feel some sort of way. And let me tell you, I better never see Liva Bray in these streets because she's going to catch these hands. I am furious. Anyway, I need to stop. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was entertaining and it wasn't a dud because I was just sitting here the whole time like I'm so freaking bored and I'm so disappointed. So if you've stuck with me this long, God bless you. And if you haven't, I totally understand. But... I'll see you in my next video and have a great night.